All right, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, we're going to send all praises and glory to Call Halal Yamah, Obanawa Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Wakakadash, Brakatah. Double honors to the men of the Lord who have taught us this truth for many, many years. Uh, this is your brother, Kabash Kabash, coming at you, uh, downtown Fort Lauderdale. Uh, today is a Saturday at 10 uh, 49 a.m. And uh, I try to come out here week in and week out to prophesy the downfall of America and to let all you brothers and sisters know that the day of the Lord is near. You know, the day of the Lord is near. You know, um, I had a stupid guy come over here just a while ago um, claiming that he's a Christian and everything. And I asked him not to get in front of my camera or whatever. Homeboy just kept stepping, stepping in the Lord's face. But when he was walking that way, the motherfucker ran into a goddamn pole. You feel me? So as a prophet, these are the things you have to deal with on a daily basis, you know? But I'm gonna tell you like this, man. If you got the fear of the Lord in you, hey, you're not gonna back down, man. The Most High is gonna look out for you. His angels gonna look out for you, all right? So and, uh, I don't know if I send double honors to the apostles and the elders who I've taught us this truth for many, many years, but the water from your teachings, because it says in scriptures that we, we know the terror of the Lord um, through men, all right? And that's how we get these scriptures. We get these scriptures through men. All right, we get these scriptures through men. Okay, so you know, I mean, yeah, your pastor might be a man or whatever, but just because he's a man doesn't mean that he's a man of the Lord. All right, just because he's a pastor doesn't mean that he's a man of the Lord. You know, because in the Bible it says, what does it say? Uh, wolves and sheep clothing. That's what these pastors are. These pastors are wolves and sheep and sheep's clothing, clothing that are leading you to the slaughter. All right, do you want to go to the slaughterhouse? I don't think you want to go to the slaughterhouse. They're not leading you down the path of righteousness. Okay, just because they speak, uh, what the Bible says, uh, he, a rich, when a rich man speaketh, everyone listens. You know, uh, another scripture in the Bible, in the Bible, uh, preach to us smooth things, sweet things. You know, people don't want to hear the right thing. They, people want to hear, oh, everything's going to be all right. All right. It's like with this prophecy right now. People cannot get over the fact that uh, America is not the way it once was several years ago, okay? And it's not going back to that stage. It's going to, only going to escalate from here, all right? It's only going to escalate from here, man, you know? That's why you got to have the fear of the Lord on you. If you don't have the fear of the Lord on you, man, you just, you know, in that day, man, you're going to be willing, man. You're going to wish you had hearken to the Heavenly Father, all right? So let's go to the book of, uh, let's see, Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? Whoa. And these preachers, they preach this, man. They want, they want you to seek the day of the Lord. But in the Bible, it says that the day of the Lord is a day of darkness, a day of gloominess. All right? It doesn't say it's a, it's a, it's a happy moment. All right? As soon as we read this one, I'm going to, um, as soon as we read this one, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to that verse. Let me see. Oh, my internet not working. on. Okay, here we go. Woe unto you. Well, this is, this is the scripture right here. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is the day of not darkness and not light. And that's the truth. The day of the Lord is the day of darkness and not light. Okay? So woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord, man. You right? All right? Because your pork shop eating preacher uh, in, your, in your mentality... And I, in scriptures it says, take out the tree from your eye, worth your paraphrasing, take out the tree from your eye before you take out the tree from somebody else's eye. So I'm going to take out my tree right now from my eye. I used to believe that the Heavenly Father's Son is going to come down glorious, okay? I believed that He was going to come down in, in a peaceful way, man, uh, giving peace to all the nations. But no, in the Bible it says that the other nations in the Bible are all spittle. It says that in the Bible, Okay? If you don't believe me, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, look how we were treated back in the 1950s. Look how we were treated in, in, in the ancient, in the, um, uh, back in the day, 50s and 60s, 1800s, 1700s. You know what I'm saying? We were here, we came here as slaves, you know? So the heathen should be as spittle, but also the heathen shall be given unto us as an inheritance. See, when the kingdom comes back, it's not going to be a democracy here in America, like America. It's going to be a kingdom. In the kingdom, you have servants. All right? That's the truth. In the kingdom, you do have servants. People say in church, oh, I can't wait for the kingdom. I can't wait for the kingdom. But no, in your mindset, 
the kingdom to you is a democracy. The kingdom, the kingdom that the Most High has is not a democracy. Everybody's not going to be created equal in the kingdom. Because you know why? It says in the scriptures that uh, we are a peculiar people. All right? The law was given to us, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. It was not given to any other nation. Was the law given to Egypt? Was the law given to Moab? All right? Was the law given to Japheth? No, it was given to the Hebrew Israelites. All right? You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And, you know, you got some Hebrew Israelites out there who have uh, white skin, you know? Because we were scattered among the nations, so we take on the faces. Of, we, we have the faces of other nations as well, all right? So it's not just black Hebrew Israelites. It's everyone who, whose father goes back to an Israelite. Your dad is a Hebrew, Hebrew Israelite, then you are a Hebrew Israelite. Okay, the Bible talks about your father, all right? So whatever your father is, that's what you are, all right? But getting back to what it says here, you know, woe unto you that seek the day of the Lord, man. Because the day of the Lord is a day of darkness, a day of gloominess. It says that in the scriptures. But the Bible, but, but these preachers don't bring that out. They think that Yahweh Shai, who they call Jesus, is going to come down glorious. But not. Nah, it says in the Bible he's coming back with a sword. It says by the sword will he plead with all flesh. That's in the scriptures. Let me bring that out right now. But these pastors don't bring that out. They don't want you to know that. Why? Because they want money in their collection plate. The only thing they preach is prosperity. That's all they preach. Prosperity doctrine. You know? So let's go back. Let's go to back to the book of Amos, chapter 5, verse 18. Woe well, unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. And that's the truth. The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. You want me to prove that? Okay, let's prove that. So Amos 5 and 18. The day of the Lord is a day of darkness, not light. Okay, now let's go back a little bit. All right? Let's go back. For by fire and by sword. Okay? This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 66 and 16. All right? It says, for by fire and by sword. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. Wait a minute, I thought he was coming in peace. But according to Isaiah 66 and 16, it says, For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. Okay? And the slain of the Lord shall be many. What? Wait a minute now. And the slain of the Lord shall be many? I thought he was all peace. But the preachers told us he was all peace. In the Bible, it said, No, where in the Bible does it say it's all peace? All right? Where in the Bible does it say he's all peace? Now, if you go back even further, we can find out that Yahweh Shai, who in the word enemy called Jesus Christ, did not come to send peace. So where in the Bible does it say that Yahweh Shai, who in the world enemy called Jesus Christ, is coming back in peace? He's not coming back in peace. It's just says in Isaiah 66 and 16, for by fire and by sword, will the Lord plead with our flesh. Okay? It goes even further to say, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. What? The slain of the Lord shall be many. If he's coming back with a sword, what do you think he's going to do with it? He's not going to just have it for, for, for a decoration, no. Yahweh Shai, who in the word in the car, Jesus Christ is going to judge people on this earth, man. He's coming back. All right? That's why you need the people need to wake up, man, and realize who the Lord is, man. Realize what kind of power he has. All right? Yahweh is going to allow his son to come back to plead with all flesh. All right? The slain of the Lord shall be many. All right? Let's prove that he did not come to send peace because a lot of people think that Yahweh Shah, whom the word and we call Jesus Christ, came to send peace. He did not come to send peace. All right? But these are the scriptures that your pastor is not telling you. They're not telling you how the Lord is going to come back with the sword to plead with all flesh. They're not telling you this. Why? Because they want to leave. They want you to get the money, put the money in their collection plate. That's why. Prosperity. Oh, the Lord is going to bless you. Okay. All right. The Lord may bless you, but it's your job as a prophet to tell the people what's going to happen. All right. What did, what did Yahweh shall tell Peter? If you love me, feed my flock. I think that was Peter, if I'm not mistaken. So like if I'm wrong. But the Lord told one of his disciples, if you love me, feed my flock. Okay? 
give us Lord our daily bread. What is our daily bread? The, the, the daily bread is the scriptures. All right, that is our daily bread. This is the living water. This is our food. This is our survival kit right here, man. It tells us how to live. The scriptures. All right. Now let's go back into it. For by fire and by sword will the Lord plead with our flesh, according to Isaiah 6, 6 and 16. All right. Now, if you don't believe that the Most High is going to um, come and plead with our flesh, hey, play with it and see what happens. Keep, keep doing what you're doing. All right. And see what happens. Oh, everything's going to be all right. Oh, I'm, I'm going to meditate on the universe. The Most High created the universe, man. Why do you want to worship his creation when he is the creator? All right. Yahweh is the creator. Why would you worship something that he created? All right. You don't need to worship anything that he created from a, from a material standpoint. Because all the elements that are on this earth, all the elements that are in the universe, he created their elements, all right? Now, we should give honor to Yahweh Shah, who, who is his son, okay? Because he died for us, man. He died for you so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, man, you know? All right, so let's get to it. Now it says, for by fire and by sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, according to Isaiah 66 and 16, right? All right, now, let me see, hold on. Make sure I got it right. Yeah, according to Isaiah 66 and 16. All right. Now, the, you think that Yahweh Shai, who in the world, in the car, Jesus Christ came to send peace? No, he did not come to send peace. He didn't come to send peace. He came to send a sword, man. All right, so let's get that right now. I uh, come. I come not to send peace, all right? This is the book of Matthew, chapter uh, 10, verse 34. Let's get into it. It says, Thank not I come to send peace. I come not to send peace, but it's war. Uh-oh, wait a minute now. I thought this preacher said that uh, Yahweh Shai, who in the work in the of Jesus Christ, came to send peace. He didn't come to send peace. I got that in the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 34. And that's the thing. Okay, if you think that Yahweh Shai came here to send peace, I want to see a scripture. Please send, give it to me in the Bible. Because according to uh, Matthew 10 and 34, it says, Think not, I come to send peace on earth. I come not to send peace, but a sword. Now, when you go back to Isaiah, what's that, 66 and 16, it says, For by fire and by sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. All right? So, and it says, I come not to send peace in, in the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 34. I come not to send peace, man. That's what the Lord said. That's what Yahweh Shah said in the word in Christ Jesus Christ. I come not to send peace, but it's sword. In Isaiah 66 and 16. All right. Let's go back to the book of Matthew, chapter 10 and 34. Faint not, I come to send peace on earth. I come not to send peace, but a sword. This is in the New Testament. This is one of the scriptures that these, that these preachers don't bring out, okay? They try to dumb you down and reverse uh, uh, the scriptures, okay? Use the scriptures for their benefit, and that is a sin. You're not supposed to do that. What do you have? What should I say? If you love me, feed my flock. Don't feed them bullshit. Feed them righteous scriptures, all right? Are these, are these pastors doing that? No, they're not doing that, man. They're dumbing you down. They're numbing you down. They're sending you to the slaughter. That's what they're doing. They're not giving you the full interpretation of the scriptures. Because when the Heavenly Father Son comes back, he's coming back with a sword. For by fire and by sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. All right? Are these preachers bringing that out? No, they're not bringing that out. Why? Because they want more money in their collection plate. They're more of a motivational speaker uh, type of pastor rather than telling you the truth What does the Bible say and the truth will set you free, but now nah, you bound it up in your lies You bound it up in the lies that these preachers tell you man All right. Oh, I'm doing good. The Lord is blessing me now. Okay, but it also says that the uh, Judgment is preserved for the wicked or something like that You know so everything may be going good for you right now But what until that day the day of the Lord comes because in that day you will be willing. You'll be willing to hearken to the heavenly father, man. 
The Heavenly Father's not playing, man. He's coming back to destroy this place, man. This nation we know as America is getting ready to be destroyed, man. You know? Let me get let me get a scripture like that up that that proves that. Well actually let me go to um um let me go to the book of Isaiah chapter 47. I mean chapter 45 verse 7. Alright? Because there's, there's a lot of stuff I want to bring out today, man. A lot of stuff I want to bring out. The water you howl by Shemel Shah. All right, let's go to Isaiah chapter 45. Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 45, uh, down to verse 7. I form light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Whoa, wait a minute now. This is not the same Lord we talk, we hear about in churches. I thought, I thought, I thought evil came from, from Satan. Well, that's what your pastor's been telling you, but according to the Bible, that's not what it says. In the book of Isaiah 7, it, uh, 45 it says, and 7, it says, I form light, I create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. So the Most High is the creator of good, and he's the creator of evil. Satan does not run anything, okay? Satan is one, I mean, Satan in the Hebrew is one of the sons of the Most High. He has to get permission to cause, to, to come down and, and, and corrupt your life, all right? You saw how he do, did Job, all right? Satan had to get permission to afflict Job. So Satan does not run this, man. Yahweh Shah runs this. All right? Well, wait a minute now. I form light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. When you go back to Isaiah 66 and 16, for by fire and by sword will the Lord be with all flesh. Okay? Hey, the Lord, hey, the Lord don't play, man. He's not just this peaceful person that you see in the church with his hair flowing. First of all, that's the wrong that's the wrong image of him because in the Bible it says he has feet like burnt brass and hair like wool. To me, that sounds like a so-called black man, right? But these devils don't want to tell you that. They want you to think that the, the, the Yahweh Shah, whom the word called Jesus Christ, is a so-called white man. And it clearly says in the Bible that he's not. He has dark flesh, hair like wool. What nationality of, of people have hair like wool? A black man does. So that image that you have of Jesus in your churches, that's the wrong image. But that's called white supremacy, though. All right? That's called white supremacy. Making you think that the Heavenly Father's son and the Heavenly Father is a so-called white man. Really? Come on. Even TBN, had, TBN, the Trinity Broadcasting Network, portrays the image of the Heavenly Father's son as a so-called white man. That's, that, come on, for real, really? What if we said George Washington was a black man? How would you feel? What if we said Abraham Lincoln was a black man? What if we said uh, uh, Christopher Columbus was a white man? So why are you standing on nationality? You claiming to be the Heavenly Father and his son? Really? Okay, let's go to the book of Job chapter 9. I think that, what, the book of Job? Uh, let me see. This is the book of Job. He covers the faces of the judges thereof. He covers the faces of the judges thereof. All right? This is the book of Job, chapter 9, verse 24. All right? Now, Job was going through it, man. Uh, Satan had to have permission from the Heavenly Father to uh, afflict him. And during his affliction, he became closer with the Most High. And he started prophesying, and that could happen. You could go through something, you know, go through a, a, a trial or tribulation, but in your mindset, you, your, your mindset, if you're a strong person, you start to develop a, a stronger spiritual mind, all right? And that's what Job was going through. He, he was prophesying while going through his affliction, you know? Now it says, the earth was given to the hand of the wicked. Who was the wicked? Well, I tell you who the wicked are. Who are the people in your government right now? 
Who runs this country? Is it black, Hispanic, Native Americans? Oh no, it's not us. So I'm gonna let you figure that out yourself. All right? Because it's not us. It's definitely not us. All right? So the earth was given into the hand of the wicked. All right? He covered the faces of the judges thereof. Now what happened during the 1500s, 14, between the 14 and 1500s? There was a thing called the Renaissance period. When you go into that word Renaissance, it actually means rebirth. All right? So during that time, they basically whitewashed all the paintings because the original paintings of the prophets were brown. If you go back to the ancient Russian paintings, those, the paintings were brown. Those prophets were brown skinned. When the Renaissance came along, all they did was just whitewash everything. Oh, Jesus is white. Oh, God is white. Okay, the angels are white. For real? Really? Then how come it says uh, in the Bible that it says, first of all, when you go back to the book of Genesis, it says, let us make man in our, in our image. Okay, now let's fast forward. What is the image of, of uh, Yahweh Shai, whom the word enemy calls Jesus Christ? It says in the Bible that he has feet like burnt brass, hair like wool. Okay, go back. Let us make man in our own image back, back during the creation period. All right, let us make man in our own image. So that comes to show you two things. Yahweh was not the only one that created the earth. Okay. The Most High had certain angels that created the earth, okay? When you go into that word God, see, when you go into that word God, it actually means plural. It's a plural thing. It's a plural word, all right? But let's not get into that. So in, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. When you go down further in the book of Genesis, it says, let us, let us make man in our image. Okay, now what's the image of the Heavenly Father? Who, uh, I mean, I mean um, Yahweh Shai. Whom the world enemy called Jesus Christ. He has feet like burnt brass and hair like wool. So, if it says, let us make man in our own image, Yahweh Shai was a man who had feet like burnt brass and hair like wool. When you go back to the book of Daniel 7 and 9, it says, uh, I think it's 7 and 9, I'm going to look it up right now. It says, and the Ancient of Days did sit. Who is the Ancient of Days? Yahweh. Okay? And it's, what does it say? I think it said he had a, gar a white garment, a garment white as snow, and he had feet. Let me see. Let me look that up right now. I think it's, uh, and the ancients of days did sit. All right. Daniel 7 and 9. All right. Let's go into it. Now remember what the scriptures are brought out. Because it says in the scriptures, let us make man in our image. Right? Okay. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. The hair of his head was like pure wool. Hmm. What nationality and group of people have hair? like wool i don't have hair on my head right now i got a little bit but look at my beard it's woolly all right his throne was like a fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire okay now when you go back when you when, well actually when you go up into the new testament okay it talks about the description of the heavenly father son whom the world is because jesus christ he said he has hair like wool feet like burnt brass all right, hair like wool, feet like burnt brass. What nationality or group of people have hair like wool and feet like burnt brass? So-called black people do, all right? So why do you have an image of the Heavenly Father's Son as a so-called white man in churches today if the scriptures clearly say, how does he look? Why does it say that? Why, why do people have a picture of a white Jesus in their churches? Why? Well, you had this thing called the Renaissance period come, and people just soaked that up like a sponge, and just said, oh, that's how Jesus looked. Well, first of all, his name is not Jesus, because the letter J was not invented until like the 1600s, between the 16 and 1700s. All right? If I'm not mistaken, between, I think, 1500, 1600, somewhere around there. That J is pronounced Yah. It's supposed to be not Yah. Now, on the, on the 12 child sign, we have uh, Judah. But that's really pronounced Yahweh, though. Okay? 
we have Benjamin, okay, that has a J in it, but that's pronounced Benyanyum. Okay, you hear the yuh in it. All right? So the letter J does not exist in the ancient Hebrew alphabet. All right? See, these pastors don't give you the certain breakdowns that they're supposed to give you, man. Okay? They don't give you the correct interpretation. They give you these things that's going to lead you to the slaughter, man. They give you false doctrine. Okay? That's what these pastors give you. Joe Osteen, Creflo Dollar, Jesse DePlanis. Okay? T.D. Jakes. All those pastors are garbage, bro. They're not giving you the truth. All right? All they talk about is prosperity. That's all they talk about. They may bring up one scripture and run with it and then tell a story behind that scripture, keeping you entertained. All right? They put a spell, basically they put a spell on your ass. They put a spell on you. You got to break out that spell, man. What does the scripture say? My yoke is easy and my burden light. Once you get the spirit of the Lord in you, man, that's how it becomes. His burden becomes easy. The burden becomes easy. And the yoke becomes light. You know? But you got to have that fire in you, man. You got to have that fear of the Lord in you, man. You know? Because if you don't, you're going you're gonna to succumb. You're going to be uh, part of the slaughter, man. You know? It says, for by fire and by sword will the Lord flee with all flesh. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. All right? The Lord is not coming back at, at, at like, uh, he's going to give you peaches and cream. No, he's not giving you peaches and cream. There's going to be bloodshed, man. All right? Let's, come on, let's be, I'm, I'm going to bring out another verse, man. I'm going to bring out another verse. Because a lot of people think, a lot of people think that, you know, he's all peace. He's not all peace. Okay, it says that he came not to send peace. He come not to send peace. All right. That's what it says. All right. Uh, let's go to the book of um, Jeremiah chapter. Well, let's, let's go to this verse right here. All right. If you love me, keep my commandments. All right. Now, a lot of people say the law was not was done away with. Where in the scriptures does it say that the law was done away with? If, the, if, the, if, law was, if, if that was the truth, if the law was done away with, sin could be justified. It'd be okay to be, do sin. It'd be okay to uh, have homosexuality. It'd be okay to uh, for pedophilia. All right? It'd be okay to steal your neighbor's car. It'd be okay to steal. It'd be okay just to uh, kill, kill your neighbor cold-bloodedly if the law was done away with. Now, realize what you're saying now. If you say the law was done away with, sin can be justified. So how can you say the law was done away with and at the same time believe in the Ten Commandments? That's very contradictory. Very contradictory. You say one thing, but on this hand, you say another. It doesn't go together. It's like oil and water. It doesn't go together doesn't go together all right so you you have to believe one thing you might as well be the, believe the righteous thing because the law was not done away with all right Yahweh Shai whom the word in because Jesus Christ said I come not to uh, I come not to destroy the law of the prophets but to fulfill what you paraphrase all right as a matter of fact let me bring this verse out then I'm gonna bring the other verse out if you love me uh, um, about the command, about the um, law, what well, Yahweh Shai said about the law, okay? This is the book of John, chapter 14, verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. What are the, what are the commandments? The law, okay? Now, I'm going to tell you like this right here, all right? We are not going to be saved by the law, but, but if you do sin, the Heavenly Father will judge you. He will judge you. So you need to live according to the scriptures. All right? Live according to the scriptures. Because we cannot keep every law that's in the book. All right? We can't. Some brothers work on the Shabbat. I have to work on the Shabbat sometimes. Sometimes the Shabbat falls under 
I work six days a week, so most of the time I'm working on the Shabbat. All right, uh, not eating swine's flesh. We're not we're not supposed to eat swine. We're not supposed to eat pig. All right, we're not supposed to eat pork. What's another law? Um, there's so many of them. We can't eat fish. We cannot eat anything that doesn't have scales. We're not supposed to eat lobster. All right. Those are some of the laws you can keep, man. I might not be able to uh, to have a day off on the Shabbat all the time, but I can also not eat fish. I can not eat pork. Okay. It says don't sleep with your, uh, your, your neighbor's wife. Can't do that. Back in the day I did. I was a sinner back then, man. You know, I was, I, I'm still a sinner today, but you know, back then I didn't, I didn't have respect. I didn't have respect for my brothers, uh, for the other guy's wife or not. You know what I'm saying? You know, I was out there in the world too, man. You know, but I repented. When I came into this truth, I repented, you know, and I'm staying away from that. All right. Certain days on the Shabbat, man, you're not supposed to have sex. You're not supposed to, um, um, basically do any work. You know, just remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. You know, keep it holy the best way you can. Okay? It goes back to what Yahweh Shah said. My yoke is easy and my burden light. It's very light. It's very easy. So why are you not hearkening to his laws? It's very easy. You know? But, you know, Isaiah, I mean, uh, the book of Hosea 4 and 6. We're preparing for it. My people uh, uh, suffer for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Since you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Okay? You don't want to be rejected because you know what it says in I Well, I don't know if you do, but I'm going to bring it out anyway. In the book of Isaiah, it says in, uh, what's that, 66 and 15, I believe? 66 and 16? For by fire and by sword will the Lord be with all flesh? You, know, you want to get rejected or you want to get saved? Because people think they're saved. You're not saved yet. Oh, I'm saved. No, you're not. Not until you start a, uh, st starting to fear for the Lord. I'm not saved yet. I still. It says, he that endure, endure to the end shall be saved. Let's get that. Because a lot of people think that they go to church and they saved. No. In the scriptures it says, he that endure to the end shall be saved. He that endure To the end shall be saved. Okay, this is the book of uh, Matthew, chapter 24, verse 13. But he that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. This goes, this goes back to uh, my yoke is easy and my burden light. Okay? See, when you get into this truth, your burdens become a whole lot lighter because you're spiritually strong. You know, that's why when you 1 